Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be checking out a solar charge controller from WattCycle. It can handle 12 volt battery banks or 24 volt battery banks and it can charge up to 30 amps. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. Okay, when you first open it, you have a little bit of styrofoam, the user's manual, a, uh, a template so you know where to drill to install it if you're going to be installing it like on a wall. All right, and then we have the solar charge controller and it looks like we have a temperature sensor right here. All right, so here is the WattCycle MPPT solar charge controller. Um, you can see that it says watt cycle at the top, uh, 30 amps, that is the maximum amount of charge that it can give your battery. Um, it does say down here that the maximum charge current is actually 40 amps, so that's kind of confusing. But I would just say that 30 amps, uh, that's what you can expect for your max charge. Uh, it is an MPPT, that stands for Multi Power Point Tracking. Uh, that makes it so it's like 25 to 30% faster than a PWM solar charge controller when it comes to being able to deliver power to your battery. Uh, it is a 12 volt and 24 volt variety, so you can use either a 12 volt bank or a 24 volt bank. Um, down here, you can see that there are your screw terminals for each of your wiring configurations. Uh, right here is going to be your solar panel. This is where you connect your solar panel up, your positive and negative. Here is your battery, which is also your positive and negative. And if you decide to connect a load directly to this solar charge controller, you would connect that here. And it recommends don't go any higher than a load of 20 amps. You also have a small display up here that we'll see what's going on once we connect a battery. And we have some lights right here that show uh, pretty much what's active at the time. On the back, you do see that we have a pretty beefy heat sink along with some uh, screw holes to be able to hang this thing on a wall. I'll go ahead and put the dimensions and the weight right down here for your reference. And also on this front side, along with the wiring uh, screw downs, you have a temperature port so we can connect a temperature gauge to it. Actually, a temperature sensor. And all that does is it monitors your, uh, like your, your lead acid batteries. And if they're too cold, I think it rises the voltage up a little bit. And if it's too hot, it lowers it. This is not for uh, turning off the charge if you have lithium iron phosphate batteries connected and it gets below freezing, this, this is not made to do that. Um, and then it has an RS-485 uh, communication port right here. And that can be either connected to like a display unit that's sold separately, or I believe you can buy two of these and have a parallel cable uh, going to each one so they actually communicate with each other. All right, so let's go ahead and connect a battery to this and see what we see. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and connect this solar charge controller up to this 12 volt battery. And what we're gonna be using is M8 ring terminals for the battery. And uh, on the other side, there's gonna be ferrule plugs on the other side so we don't have a bunch of stray wires going everywhere. First, we're gonna go to the battery negative and unscrew it and put in our ferrule plug, screw it back down. And make sure you screw it down real tight because you do not want these things to really move around. All right, now that we connected the battery, uh, the unit has turned on. Now you always want to connect a battery first before you connect your solar panels. And you can see right here that there is a green light that shows that there is a battery connected. And on the display, it does show that the battery is at 13.1 volts and that the battery is a 12 volt battery. It's a 12 volt configuration. If I had two 12 volt batteries in series, this would show 24 volts. The next thing I would wanna do is make sure that the charging algorithm is set to the correct battery chemistry that I'm using. I'm using lithium iron phosphate, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what we need to do. Okay, when I hold down the uh, cog on the left hand button, it says that it's set for gel right now and that's not what I want. So let's go down and that is uh, sealed, sealed lead acid. There's flooded. Uh, that is user configurable. And then LI is for lithium. So we'll just go ahead and use that one. 
So what you'd want to do is once you select your, uh, your, your battery profile, you'd want to hold down the cog again to accept it. All right, and it also looks like the idle consumption of this watt cycle solar charge controller is only like 0.05 amps. So it is very small. Cause you gotta figure all it's really powering is this LCD screen and this little tiny light right here. So not much is going on. But let's go ahead and take this battery and um, the watt cycle solar charge controller outside with a 200 watt foldable solar panel and see what kind of production we can get. Now remember, it is uh, the middle of February. It is sunny outside, but I'd be very happy if we got like 125 watts from solar right now. But let's go ahead and check it out. All right, it's a bit windy out here, but you should be able to hear me just fine. You can see that I have my 200 watt solar panel set up. Uh, it is a very nice sunny day. And we have the solar panels connected from our uh, MC4 connectors to our, uh, the positive and negative on our solar charge controller. And on here, you can see the current voltage that's going into the battery that's at 13.4 volts. If you go down, you can see the voltage coming in from the solar panel, which is 36 volts. Uh, but you can see the amount of amps going in. This says 12.8 amps. If you look at the actual app for the battery, um, you can see that we're actually getting 165 watts coming in. And that is 12.4 uh, amps at 13.4 volts. So this is a lot better than I was expecting. All right, so overall, a pretty easy piece of equipment to use. All this really does is it takes the voltage and the amperage from your solar panels and it converts it to a voltage and amperage that your battery can use. When it comes to hooking it up, all you need this to do is connect it to your battery bank. It will auto recognize whether it's a 12 volt or 24 volt bank. And then you just hold down this little cog button and select what type of battery chemistry you have. It's really that easy. After that, you connect your solar panels and just make sure that you're not using over 100 volts of solar. And knowing that this thing can deliver 30 amps of electricity to your battery. And what that equates to is if you have a 12 volt battery bank, you're going to be getting between 360 and 400 watts. And if you have a 24 volt bank, you could just double that. So between 720 and 800 watts. So if you have any questions about the watt cycle 100 volt 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item and everything else I used in my description, just in case you want to look into it. Thanks again and have a great day. Bye bye.